A literature review is a big project. There is so much information that you'll be acquiring and wanting to organize and keep on top of. And you'll probably be collecting this over a longer term period. So having good notes that you can refer to so that you don't have to keep rereading papers is a real benefit. And then once you have all of that information, then comes the task of writing your review. And so I'm gonna show you how you can use Protolist to organize and move the information that you're gathering from all the papers around in your workspace to put it in particular formats to hopefully help you with writing your literature review. I'd describe this as a bit of a two-step workflow. The first part being building a template and system to help you with gathering information and reading your papers critically in the first place so that you're lifting and collecting information that you can use in your lit review. And then secondly, I'll show you how you can use Protolist to organize and reconfigure all of those notes and information that you've lifted out of the papers to help you with identifying those themes, trends and patterns as well as the debates within your field. So after you've gone through the step of searching through the literature and identifying papers that you want to read, let's talk about how you can set up a template to help you with critically reading each paper. So for this paper reading workflow, we're gonna set up two tables. And the reason that I'm using tables is so that we can make use of the features of them being relational databases. So the first table that I'm gonna create is a sources table. And you can drag and drop papers onto the table and they will upload into Protolist. So I'll just grab a few of those, drag and drop them in, they will upload each one populating a separate row. Okay, so I've got a few papers there that we're going to read. Before we start reading them, let's set up the questions that we want to have in mind as we're reading these papers. So I'm gonna choose table type for this table and I'm just gonna call them critical questions. It's probably a better name. So I'm just gonna add in a few different questions to have in mind as I'm starting to read through the papers in my sources table. Um, you may well have templates or particular questions that you want to focus on, so add them in. Okay, so I've added a few kind of broad overarching topics, which I will use as tags for my atoms. And then in the description, I've kind of added in some prompting questions. As I'm collecting atoms from my sources, these will be the questions that I want to have front of mind and perhaps add my initial thoughts into the atom box so that I'm saving the highlight that I will have lifted out of the paper alongside my interpretation and initial thoughts. So I'm actually going to delete these properties because we aren't gonna be making use of them at the moment. Okay, so we've got critical questions. Let's jump back to the sources. And let's open up one of the pages. And so I've put together those critical questions as well as some prompting questions for me to consider as I'm reading this paper. So I can open them both up in split screen. So I've already got a paper open. Um, to open up the critical questions table that we just prepared in split screen, you can control click, or you can use this three dot button and use open in split screen to get them open side by side in the Protolist tab. Cool. So now I've done that, I've got my critical questions with the tags or the name of the tags that I will be able to use alongside the description. So as I'm reading through, as I come across information, um, I can highlight the section of text and select capture atom. And that will lift it out of the page and add it into a searchable catalog of highlights within your Protolist workspace. So even when you don't have the paper open, you'll be able to access and view and find this highlight in your workspace. Now I've found this piece of information, um, I can start to consider which of these questions it's kind of relevant to. As it's in the introduction, I'm gonna say that it's probably a background bit of information. And then I've got, you know, context, what's been studied and determined already. Um, at this point, I think that the atom itself is self-explanatory, so I won't add any thoughts in. But if you did want to add any further info in, you can click into the box and then type your idea in here like this and then you're saving both that piece of information as well as your initial thoughts and interpretation of it. 
And so you can continue reading the paper, highlighting the important bits of text and using the tags to connect it to the relevant kind of topics and themes, and then adding your thoughts in underneath around those kind of prompting questions that we've added into the table. And that method works well. But over time, as you continue reading papers, there's going to be a lot of papers that you read for a lit review. As you become more familiar with the sorts of prompting questions and info that you want to add into your highlights, you could enhance this workflow by making use of atom filters in the sources table. If I jump back to the sources table, you can see that the atom that I captured is displaying in this atoms column. We can make use of filters to be able to group the atoms that we've tagged with a particular critical question so that we can have a grid overview um, of each of these critical questions so we can see what information we've dredged up from each paper. Whenever you've added an atoms property into your table, if you click on the property title, you can update the title, but you can also add a filter. And this is why we set up the critical questions as a table because the rows of the table are pages in your workspace and pages are what you need to be able to filter by to organize your atoms. So the tags that we've created are classed as pages in ProtList and we can use that to apply atom filters. So let's do it in order, I guess. Let's add background there. And then I'm gonna swap this sub pages property we're going into the property type drop down, swapping it to atoms, and then I'm going to add the next tag. I'm just going to close this split screen. So I'm now just going to go and add atoms properties into this table and a filter for each of the remaining tags that we have in that critical questions table. Okay, so if I scroll the table across to the left and right, you can see that I've added atoms properties for each of the critical questions in the critical questions table. I haven't collected any further atoms and tagged them to these different topics yet. So all of the atoms properties are empty. You could add any further information that you wanted to into this table with further properties. I'm just gonna stick with these atom fields properties for now. And so now when you open up your paper, we can go to the properties menu, this little eye in a circle, if we click that, it will expand the properties bar on the right side of the paper. And we'll see each of the properties that we added into the table listed vertically. And so now what you can do is as you go through and find your atoms, rather than capturing atom and typing in all the tags manually, you can not hit capture atom and just drag and drop your text into the corresponding property box. And that will automatically capture an atom and add the tag that you have as a filter. So it will automatically create this atom and add the methods tag. If you wanted to add further tags, you would then need to type it in, or you could set up further properties with combinations of your tags. And so let me just capture a few more atoms so that you can see how they all display within the table. So I've just captured several atoms there, making use of the pre-prepared filtered atom properties to automatically tag them as I went. And you can see that they're all displaying in this view. So whenever I come to my sources table, I can quickly get a sense as to what the papers were about by browsing through the different atoms that I've collected around these different topics. You could also add your own summary in there using a text property um, to put everything into your own words. And so every time you add a new paper into this table, when you open it up and expand that properties bar, you will have the pre-prepared uh, atom filter properties to quickly capture atoms and organize and group them around the different critical question tags that we created earlier. And then similarly, if you were to go through, go into the critical questions table, we could add an atoms property back into this table and you will see all of the atoms from every paper in your sources table that have been tagged to a particular question. So in this next steps row in the atoms column, you will get a list of all of the next steps from every paper that you've captured an atom and tagged to next steps. So you can pull and group the information together like that. As often is the case, there might be several different topics and subtopics that you are focusing in on within your field of research. 
and you may want to group your papers based on the different information that they're containing, particularly if you are working on an interdisciplinary project or a project that spans several different topics, you might want to separate them all out into those different topics. So what I'm going to do now is add in a topics table. Again, I'm doing it as a table so that we can see the benefits of tagging and the relational database setup within Protolis. So let's add a topics and themes table. Again, choose type table. I'll just call it topics. These are some topics that we're going to use just to show you how the atoms would move and behave within Protolis. So we've set up this topics table. If I jump back to the sources table, I'm actually going to add a linked table property so that we can tag each paper to the relevant topics. So I'm going to choose linked table from the dropdown and then select the topics table, link the table. And what this does is obviously link this table to the topics table. And it means that I get to choose as many of the pages as I like from the pages that are within the topics table. And so since these were all the different topics that are relevant to the papers in this table, um, I can choose like tuning properties, gelation, hydrogels. So there is now a direct link between this particular paper and those different topics that I added. So if I jump back to the topics table, you'll see that that paper is listing in this link table property here. So over time, what will happen is as we collect more papers and categorize them or tag them with this link table property to the relevant topics, we'll start to group together the papers that are relevant to a particular topic. And if I also wanted the atoms from these papers to display in this table, I can choose to inherit the atoms from the sources table. So if I open up the linked table property options and then choose inherit atoms from sources, you'll see the atoms now appear in the atoms column. And so now that the atoms are being inherited into this table, we can start to collect all of the atoms around a particular topic from several different papers here in this table. And similarly to what we did within the sources table, we can add atom filters to give even further grouping of the information within a particular topic by those different questions. So I could get all of the methods from a bunch of papers that are related to a particular topic displaying in this table. And just like I did before, we can do that by adding atom filters. So if I add an atoms property and then filter by methods, you'll see that where there's all the atoms from the paper are listing in this general atoms property with no filters, just the one that is tagged with methods is displaying in this column. And so by using the critical questions as atom filters in this topics table, you'll start to be able to collate all of your background knowledge within a particular topic area around those critical question themes. So if I now go back and capture some more atoms from the papers in the sources table, you'll see how all of the information collates and groups together. Okay, so I've collected a few more atoms from the other sources in the table and now you'll see that where we've set up the atom filters, any of the papers that we have tagged to tuning properties, which at the moment is just the first paper, as you can see here, are displayed. And so with this being a linked table property, we can link it from either table. So we can be in this topics table and select the title of the paper that we want to add into this topics list or we can be in the sources table and add the different topics into the linked table property in the sources table. So if I were to add another one of the papers that we've atomized um, into this list of tuning properties, um, 
If I view this list of atoms in full screen, you will see that there are now two atoms in this box, um, one of which corresponds to the Advanced Healthcare Materials paper, the other of which corresponds to this Continuous Manufacturing of Fibres paper. So I'm starting to be able to group my information around topics and those critical questions. And as you gather more and more information and you start to have a long list of atoms that you've collected and are grouped together in different parts of your workspace, you can always jump back to the original paper by clicking the source tag of any of your atoms. So if you wanted to jump back and just refresh on exactly what was said in the paper, you can click this source tag and it will open up the source paper um, exactly where you highlighted and extracted that atom in the first place. So you can read around and refresh on any of the information as needed. And if you wanted to change the different information that was displaying, you can go into this properties options and kind of toggle the different properties on and off. So we could hide the linked sources property so that we don't see a list of all the papers if you wanted to just hone in on particular bits of info. And ultimately, hopefully that gives you a bit of a flavor of the different ways that you can use Protolist with the atom filters and the linked table properties to move information around and group it together in different ways so that you can have the information to hand when it comes to writing your lit review.